complicated. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, well, first of all, the question about um, um, violence against women. And I think the, 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 the um, Strauss Kahn is was such a symbolic case uh, um, because it helps us um, understand the, you know, the deep corruption at the very heart of the financial system in the world and how that's linked to the violence that, uh, that ordinary people suffer, and especially violence against women. And, and um, I should point out that um, uh, we haven't yet developed um, the vocabulary to talk about violence against women as the uh, most consistent form of violence in the world. So we think about military violence, we think about police violence, we think about racist violence, and we usually assume that it's men who are the targets of that violence. So, uh, but actually, um, you know, violence against women, intimate violence, violence in the family. Uh, you know, feminism also teaches us how to make connections between that private violence, a privatized violence, and institutional uh, violence. Uh, and I think that young people uh, are in a better position to grasp these connections, uh, which seem kind of alien to people who've grown up thinking in these compartmentalized ways. But young people, particularly those who were involved in, in the, uh, continue to be involved in the Occupy Wall Street, uh, uh, movement, the Occupy movement, or as uh, uh, many um, indigenous people in the U.S. call it, the decolonize movement. So we often call it the Occupy decolonize uh, movement. Uh, the um, the I think, as I said earlier, there's been a new um, terrain established for political discourse. Uh, I think that uh, the, the most important achievement of the Occupy Decolonized Movement has been to create a terrain of uh, discourse, uh, political discourse, that allows us to engage capitalism in a very different way. You know, not just the, uh, the, 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 the finance uh, um, agencies, but the whole system of capitalism. And, and how it uh, affects uh, uh, the majority of the people. And so I think the 99% is, um, is an important um, slogan. However, it has to be, um, as I pointed out when I spoke at the various Occupy sites, that we have to think about the unity of the 99% as a complex unity, not as a simple unity. Uh, because those who are in the top 99% uh, are very different from those who are at the the one the lower 1% rate, right? uh, and the the the, the 99th percentile is much closer to what we call the 1% than the lower 1%. And so we have to begin to think about you know, how do you forge unity. Uh, among people uh, who have different material uh, interests and um, uh, different ideological uh, orientations. Uh, and how can you uh, persuade um, people in the um, middle class to stand up for those who are in prison, who you might suggest are the lowest 1%? Uh, um, and how do you how do you bring issues into the Occupy uh, movement that uh, involve uh, uh, an end to uh, settler colonial societies, uh, the situation of indigenous people in the US, the situation of Palestinian people, um, um, Israeli occupation, US occupation of, uh, of uh, Afghanistan. And I think the real challenge is going to be to uh, bring all of these issues into a framework uh, 
that sees uh, the importance of standing up for uh, the rights of working people, of, of, of working class people all over the world. And maybe we'll develop a new international.